last class, we finished off question four and question five. The following, identify the oxidizing agent and reducing agent. Yeah, so remember, oxidizing agent is the species which is being reduced. Right, so our rule. Yeah, oxidizing agent undergoes reduction. Yeah, and reducing agent undergoes oxidation. So therefore, in the first example, which is the reducing agent? What's the reducing agent there? In fact, that's a non-spontaneous reaction, but we can still... Copper would be the reducing agent in that example. And... What's the oxidizing agent? No. Thank you. Iron 2 plus. Right? So your oxidizing and reducing agents have to be a reactant. Right? So you've got to be really careful that when you're stating what the reducing or oxidizing agent, make sure you're including the ion. Yeah? So the second example, the oxidizing agent is what? Nope. Silver plus, right? Where is silver plus on the electrochemical series? Get your best friends open. Yeah, open it to the electrochem series. Yeah, find where silver is. Yeah, it's way up here. Yeah? Way up on the left, top left hand corner. So, when we think about it, this is increasing in oxidizing strength. Right, and then we look at the right hand side is increasing as we go down in reducing strength. Right? So, in your um, holiday helmet that I've handed back, many of you were talking about particular components of redox reactions as, as their location on the electrochemical series. And you'll notice that my note on all of those was you need to make explicit reference to its oxidizing or reducing strength, not that it's higher or lower on the electrochem series. Okay? So that's the specificity of language that we need to talk about. Calcium plus water. What's the oxidizing agent there? Well, you've got 50 50 chance. No, not hydrogen. Water. Water's the oxidizing agent, and therefore the reducing agent is calcium. Yeah? Question? Yeah? Oops. Yes, the hydrogen within water, yeah, does reduce, yeah, but it's not the hydrogen that's a reducing agent. The agent is the whole thing. It's the water. Make sense? Yeah, but you are correct. It's the the oxidation number on the hydrogen changes, but water is acting as the agent. Cool. So we can't just separate the hydrogen from the water. It's not a ionic compound that's dissolved in solution. Right, what's being oxidized and what's being reduced in each of these? So in A, what's being oxidized? Zinc, what's being reduced? H plus. Yep, awesome. Next one. It's being oxidized, yep, and which is being reduced. Fantastic. Next one. It was being oxidized, is correct? Fluorine is being reduced. Where's fluorine? Fluorine is the strongest oxidizing agent on the electrochem series. Cu2 plus plus 2Fe2 plus goes to Cu plus 2Fe3 plus. What do you get there? What's being oxidized? 
Fe2 plus is being oxidized. Excellent. So therefore, Cu2 plus is being reduced. There we go. Oxidation reduction. There's our half equations. Okay, I'm going to go through this fairly quickly. Do you need more examples of this? No? Happy for me to just move on to the next section? Yep. Okay. Oxidation numbers. We went through these quickly. We've seen them last year, so we'll go through these quickly again. Right? They're not real things. Okay, that's the one thing to stress. It's not a formal charge. All right? It's just, it's a way of deducing whether a chemical species is being oxidized or reduced. The rules in its elemental form, right, is zero. So a number of you made the mistake when we're looking at the oxidation of, say, magnesium, that the solid you're putting is two plus. Right? So just, just be mindful of that. Simple ions, the oxidation number is equal to the charge, so that's particularly our group one, group two, group three, group six, group seven, group no, not group eight. Yeah, hydrogens normally plus one. Only exception is metal hydrides. So if it's combined with a group one metal or perhaps a group two metal, it's likely to be minus one. Oxidation number of oxygen, usually minus two. The exceptions are peroxide. And the only peroxide we really look at is um, H2O2, which you'll notice is in two locations on your electrochemical series. And that's because hydrogen peroxide undergoes a self-redox reaction. Is it both acts as reducing agent and oxidizing agent because it decomposes into water and oxygen. Neutral compounds, some of oxidation numbers must be equal to zero. Polyatomic ions, some must equal to the charge. Okay. So some exceptions, not going to worry about exceptions. Common oxidation numbers, right? The group kind of helps us. So group one, plus one. Group two, pretty much all plus two. Uh, group 15, if it's the ide version, right? So nitride is going to be minus 3. Um, oxide, minus 2. Sulfide, minus 2. Right? All our halogens, usually minus 1. Usually. A couple of examples. Elemental forms, all zero. In a compound, aluminium chloride. Aluminium is plus 3, it's in group 13, right? Gets rid of 3 electrons. Chloride is minus one. Hydrogen in hydrogen gas is zero. In water it's plus one. In sodium hydride it's minus one. Uh, sodium sulfate. Sodium is plus one, group one metal. Oxygen, it's not a peroxide, so therefore minus two. Four lots of minus two gives me minus eight. Take off two gives me minus six, so therefore sulfur must be plus six. Does that make sense? How we work that out? Okay, quickly, let's go through these. What would the oxidation number of the nitrogen be? Zero, Zero right, pure. In vanadium 3+, plus, it's going to be? Plus 3, excellent. In carbonate, what is the oxidation number on the oxygen? Minus 2, cool. I've got 3 of them, that gives me minus 6. Take off 2, because it's a 2 minus charge. Therefore, what is the carbon? Plus 4, fantastic. In uh, potassium permanganate. Now, permanganate, not peroxide. So oxygen would be minus 2. Potassium, group 1 metal, so therefore it is plus 1. So I've got plus 1, 4 lots of minus 2 gives me minus 7, therefore what's manganese? Yeah, there we go. Fantastic. I won't make you do all those. Right, let's just move on. How we use them, right? Oxidation is an increase in oxidation number. Yeah? Makes sense. If we're oxidizing, we're losing electrons. So if we're losing negative, we become more positive. Therefore, oxidation number increases. Reduction involves the gain of electrons. Electrons are negatively charged. So if we're gaining more negative charge, we decrease an oxidation number or become more negative. Notice I use the word more. You're not becoming positive or becoming negative. You're becoming more positive or more negative. So an example of that is when we take the chloride ion, and if we reduce that back to, sorry, if we oxidize the chloride ion, we become more positive back to chlorine gas. becomes zero, not positive. Okay. 
So we've got this particular half equation. Let's consider the oxidation numbers of all the elements. In oxygen, what do you have? What's the oxidation number of oxygen in oxygen gas? Zero. Zero. Fantastic. Oxygen within water is? Minus two. Right? The hydrogen in water is? Plus one. The hydrogen in hydroxide would be? Also plus one. Yep, there we go. Right, so oxygen in that case is being reduced. Photosynthesis. Right, we can look up which element is being oxidized and which is being reduced based off our oxidation numbers. Let's go through them. Just quick left to right. Um, hydrogen in water is plus one, minus two. Uh, let's look at oxygen first. Minus two times two is minus four. The carbon's plus four, yeah? Cool. Uh, oxygen gas is zero. zero. Fantastic. This oxygen will be minus two. This hydrogen will be plus one. Twelve lots of plus one. Plus six lots of minus two gives me one. Zero. zero. So therefore the oxidation number of this carbon is zero. zero. So we're going from plus four to zero. So is the carbon being oxidized or reduced? Reduced, right? It's decreasing an oxidation number. The oxygen in water to oxygen gas goes from minus 2 to 0. So therefore it is oxidizing. There we go. Excellent. Yeah? Okay. Lots more examples. Do you want me to go through one more? No? Happy to move on? Cool. Let's do that. Um, and do we want to start looking at complex redox equations and recap cohes? Yeah? Yep, cool. Let's look at that. Cohes. Key thing to remember with cohes is it can only occur in acidic environments. So when you think application, don't always think cohes. So if I've got an alkaline battery, which is a redox reaction, cohes doesn't apply because there's no hydrogen ions present. Right? When I think cohes, I'm thinking acidic solutions only. What does it stand for? Key element, we balance oxygens by adding water to the appropriate side. We balance hydrogen by adding hydrogen ions. Then we balance the charge by adding the appropriate number of electrons. Then we add state. Common mistake, right, is adding the same number of electrons as hydrogens. That's not always going to be the case. Okay? So just take a moment to pause after you balance the hydrogens before you just throw in the electrons. Let's look at these couple of examples. A manganese ion and iron three ions in an acidified solution, right? It already tells us it's acidified. We can use cohes. Permanganate reduced to Mn2 plus, iron two oxidized to iron three. Half equation for iron two to iron three, really straightforward. There we go. Right? Iron's the key element. It's just going iron 2 to iron 3 plus. Right? I've only got one of them, so key is already balanced. There's no oxygen present, so I don't need to add water. No hydrogen present, so I don't need to add hydrogen. Balance the charge. Got to add an electron to the right hand side in order to balance the charge because I'm going from 2 to 3. So 3 plus plus 1 minus gives me back the 2 plus I start with and put in my states. It says it's a certified solution. Solution means aqueous, so I put my aqueous in there. Let's look at permanganate. A little bit more challenging. Right, but a common example. Uh, sorry, manganese permanganate goes to Mn2+. Plus. Right, one manganese, one manganese. That's nicely balanced. I add four, I've got four oxygens on the left-hand side, so I must add four waters to the right-hand side. Balance that. Now I've got eight hydrogens on my right-hand side. I need to balance eight hydrogen ions on my left-hand side. Electrons, right. Now I've got to think about charge. One minus plus eight gives me plus seven. Plus two plus nothing gives me plus two. The difference, therefore, is five. I need to add five electrons. Does that make sense, how I do that? Yeah? And another way of considering it is the number of electrons that are transferred 
should equate to the difference in oxidation number. So the, our, our check, all the lots of 